Hello, all my visual learners. Today, we are going to be in the pulmonary section of Memory Farm's Top 200 Drugs Made Easy Coloring Book, going over inhaled beta-2 agonist medications. So if you're ready, let's color and learn. A fun fact, did you know that inhaled beta-2 agonists are pretty controversial in the world of sports? Though this medication is effective in asthmatic patients, a pooled data analysis in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that these medications can boost sprint performance in athletes without asthma. Because of this, beta-2 agonists are added to the list of banned drugs for use in athletes without documented asthma. So to start off, inhaled beta-2 agonists mainly come in short-acting and long-acting formulations. The short-acting formulations are used to provide immediate relief of asthma symptoms. Longer-acting formulations are used regularly for maintenance therapy. The drugs in this class are easy to recognize as they all end in the suffix terol. Examples include albuterol, formoterol, salmeterol, and if you pay close attention, the brand names even hint at the drug's use, such as Proair, Provenol, Ventolin, Onbreeze, think Proair, Proventilation, Onbreath. Memory tip. You can remember that beta-2 receptors are commonly located in the lungs by thinking you have two lungs, versus beta-1 receptors are commonly located in the heart, and remember we have one heart. As I alluded to before, inhaled beta-2 agonists are used in the frontline management and treatment of bronchial asthma and COPD. Two common airway diseases characterized by constricted and narrow airways, leading to symptoms of wheezing, breathlessness, and chest tightness. So important things to keep in mind when using the medications in this class are, let me repeat, some important things to keep in mind. So if you're zoned out coloring right now, now is the time to check back in. There is a box warning that long-acting beta-2 agonists should not be used as monotherapy in the maintenance of asthma due to reports of increased asthma-related deaths. These medications are often given in combination with inhaled corticosteroids and not given alone. So moral of the story, always give long-acting formulations of beta-2 agonists with inhaled corticosteroids in patients with asthma. And how do we treat these symptoms? We give them an inhaled medication that opens up the airways or bronchodilates it and causes bronchial smooth muscle relaxation. So hello, inhaled beta-2 agonists. So how do these medications work? As the name implies, inhaled beta-2 agonists work by binding onto beta-2 receptors in the lungs. Remember, agonist means on, antagonist means off. So these medications bind to beta-2 receptors and turn them on, which leads to bronchial smooth muscle relaxation and bronchodilation. Moving on to side effects. The visual anchor for this class of medications is a beta fish. So remember the mnemonic, don't tick off a beta fish or bad side effects can happen, right? T stands for tremors and tachycardia, which mainly occur at high doses of this drug. I stands for increases in blood glucose and blood sugar should be monitored closely in patients with pre-existing diabetes. C is for cough, which is expected in any type of medication that is inhaled. And K is for potassium decrease due to the intracellular shift of potassium into the cells. You'll see these drugs be used as a potential drug option in patients with hyperkalemia to help bring the potassium levels down. Last but not least, some important counseling points to watch out for. The short-acting beta-2 agonists are used as rescue medications. This includes albuterol and level albuterol and the long-acting preparations are used for schedule or maintenance therapy. Inhalers have different formulations for delivering the drugs such as meter dose inhalers, dry powder inhaler, and soft mist inhalers. Ensure the patient is using the proper inhaler technique. Formulations with capsules should not be swallowed, but the capsule should be punctured with the device that the patient was given and the contents should be inhaled. So are you ready? Let's do some review because repetition is the mother of all learning. Again, using our beta fish inhaler, we can remember beta-2 agonists. 
agonists do what again? That's right, they turn the receptors on. Now let's get creative and color in these instructions while we marinate on that thought. Okay, now moving on. Inhaled beta-2 agonists are used to treat asthma, COPD, and exercise-induced bronchospasm. These are conditions where the airways are constricted and narrow, leading to breathlessness and wheezing. So how do these drugs help with these symptoms? They open up the airways and allow oxygen to flow through the lungs by binding onto what kind of receptors? Yep, that's right, beta-2 receptors, located on the lungs because remember we have two lungs. This leads to bronchial smooth muscle relaxation and bronchodilation. You guys are doing great, so let's take a quick break and color the spade of fish inhaler. For side effects, let's have our mnemonic again. Don't tick off a beta fish. T stands for what again? Yes, T stands for tachycardia and tremors that can occur at high doses of this medication. I stands for increases in blood glucose or sugars, so we want to monitor this in our diabetic patient. C stands for cough, because when we are inhaling anything, it can cause irritation to the throat and therefore lead to coughing. K stands for potassium decrease. Remember these medications can also be used to treat hyperkalemia so they can lower your potassium levels. Last key points to remember, these medications come in what two formulations again? Yes, short acting and long acting. Short acting is used for rescue therapy and long acting is used for maintenance therapy. Things you want to monitor for include inhaler technique, is the patient using the inhaler correctly, respiratory status, as well as vital signs. Alright guys, that's it for today. If you found this helpful, click that subscribe button for more. If you're interested in getting more information from our Top 200 Drugs Made Easy coloring book, I will leave a link to the product in the description below and I will see you in the next episode.